Well, today I want to talk to you about the power of praise and really uh, the power of, of praising God. Uh, the Bible says in the end days that um, people will become unthankful and um, they will be people that are just unthankful, ungrateful, and um, hopefully that's not going to be said of us. Amen. And I think that uh, in our society, uh, a lot of times um, we get, sometimes we can get this attitude um, even at work, you know, how many people have a job in here? Amen. And um, good. And, um, and we may get this attitude that, uh, you know, sort of an attitude like, like the boss owes us something or um, maybe, uh, you know, it, it's being very prevalent in our society today. It's, it's an attitude of, of, um, uh, of maybe the government owing us something or um, somebody owes us just because we show up. And, um, you know, we don't want to get in that attitude. We don't want to get in an attitude, you know, of entitlement. It's an entitlement type of attitude. And it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's very prevalent. You just look around and people expect um, to, you know, they want to know what you're going to do for them. Um, they they want to know what the church is going to do for them. And, you know, we get phone calls. We get people asking and we do help out any way we can. Um, but we have people that will call and they call a lot of churches looking for help, but uh, a lot of times um, they're not involved in church. Uh, they may be a Christian, they may not be a Christian, and they're looking for the church to help them with their electric bill, but they're not, you know, they're not part of the solution. They're not involved in church. I say, we say to some of these people that, that we try to help the people inside the church first, and um, because those are the people that, that come in and they, they give, and so we try to help everybody, but we can't help we can't help everybody outside the church. We can understand that. Yeah. And, um, and, so, and there's organizations that does that. We have helped out on the outside as the Lord leads. But, um, but bottom line is a lot of these people, um, they, they, they have an entitlement attitude. Some of these people say, well, you're the church. You should be helping. And I said, well, if you are a body, if you are a believer, you should be in the church and you should be giving some of your talents and abilities. And a lot of people don't think about it that way. And and I think that we need to really look at it that way. Even sometimes people come to church and uh, they, they come and I, I call them church shoppers. You ever heard of that term? Uh, I, I'm, I'm actually, they, they don't say it that way. They say, I'm looking for a church. And they're looking to see, you know, how the church can benefit them. You know, how the pastor, how all these. And they kind of look at, okay, what can the church do for me? And, um, you know, there was a famous president that, that said, you know, Ask not what, you know, your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. And I'm going to say this. Ask not what your, your church can do for you, but what can you do for your church or what can you do for your God? Amen. And so we have to get a, a revelation that, that God did it for us. He, I mean, in other words, he, he paid the price. He, he took the first step. He, he sent his son Jesus. Jesus paid the awesome price for us to walk in victory, for us to have all that we have today. Thank God that this country was founded on Christian principles. Thank God that, that, that the bedrock of this country is based on Christianity. This is a Christian nation. You know, even though some may not say it's not a Christian nation, it's a Christian nation. We send more missionaries out than any other nation in the world. Is that amazing? And you know what? We're a small percentage of the entire world. A very small percentage of what the world, seven billion people in this world. And I believe America, we have three hundred, we don't even have a billion people here in America. So, so we're not even one sixth of the world. We, we're, we're small, but we're sending out more missionaries. We're doing a lot. We're helping all over the, all over the world, you know, where there's a need. Uh, we're one of the first countries to go and help. Amen. That's, that, we should be proud of our nation. We should be proud of our heritage. We should be proud of our forefathers that stood on Chris, Christian principles. And so, and so we, need, we need to be thankful for what we have. We need to be thankful and, and not take advantage of what we have, not take advantage of the system. There's lots of people taking advantage of the system. Amen. And, um, uh, you know, we don't need to take advantage of the system. Right. We need to be a part of the solution and not part of the problem. And we need to be the ones coming in and saying, you know, well, instead of what can this church do for me, what can I do for this church? Amen. Amen. It's a whole different attitude. In other words, what can I do for my God? 
And so we have to get a revelation of that and, and, get, and get a hard attitude of thankfulness. And we have to get this, this attitude out um, of us sometimes where even as being a Christian, and some of us are workers, and some of us are faithful, laying down our life for the gospel, sometimes even when we are praying and we're not seeing the answers to our prayer, we, we, we sort of question God. God, you know, I, I've been doing the right things. I started coming to church, and, and now I'm doing the right things, and, but I'm not really seeing my prayers being answered, you know, like I want them. I see, you know, sister so-and-so, her prayer got answered, and, and I've been here six months. She just showed up two weeks, and she just got a new job. And I've been showing up every week. Why isn't it working for me? You know, have you ever have you ever looked at yourself and wondered why isn't it working for me? You know, how come it's working for them? And, and we need to be very careful that we're not getting in the mode of of uh, serving God out of a, a legalistic sense. We we serve God to see what God can give us, or or we we can we can have a tendency to get into a mode of well, I'm coming to church now. God has to bless me. Now God. Now God has to do something for me because now I'm doing A, B, and C. You know, I come to church on Sunday and I'm tithing and I'm even being nice to that brother I don't really like. And, um, <laughs> you know, I'm even doing that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, uh, and I'm doing all the right things, but, you know, the wrong things. And we can have an attitude. We can get sometimes an attitude. God, you know, I'm doing all the right things. You know, what's wrong with you? You know? <laughs> what's wrong God I mean it seems like you're slack concerning your promises and the Bible says that God is not slack concerning his promises that God is look you know he he watches over his word to perform it so God is watching over his word but see we have to stay in the right attitude um, and 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 continue to thank God when things aren't going the right way let's look at something here that's um, that's an interesting passage of scripture it's in the book of James and look at James 1. And I'm going to say this, that in the early church, they, there was a lot of problems. There was a lot of pro problems and persecution. Um, they had a lot of issues and problems. <coughs> and, um, and so, um, and so, they, so uh, it wasn't easy. You know, I would say you know, in the early church, it really wasn't that easy to serve the Lord. It was a lot of pressure. It was a pressure to conform to society, and even today, it's 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 a lot of pressure to conform to to what you know what everybody else is doing. It, it, it's a lot of pressure to conform to just the status quo, um, uh, and, and we don't need to buckle under that pressure. We don't need a you know we need to stand up for Jesus. If we're going to be Christians, we need to stand up for what the Word says and not buckle under pressure. Amen. Uh, lots of a uh, lot. Some of us Christians are buckling under the pressure of today. And uh, some of us are buckling under sin, under the pressure of sin. I'm going to say this, that, that praise, uh, I was reading a, a book on praise, and, and the person was talking about the praise cure. And I'm going to say this, that praise can really, praising God and worshiping God, can, can bring most of us out of the issues that we're dealing with. And the way I, I, I thought about this, because a lot of times, even in our Christian walk and our, our Christian makeup, uh, even as people, we have a tendency to lean on our own flesh. Do you have a tendency of leaning on your own understanding a lot of times? You know, oh, I can do that. I can figure this out. You know, I, 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 you know I'm, I'm street smart. I know how to navigate through this life. And a lot of times we, 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 have, we put um, uh, confidence in the wrong area. We put confidence in our own ability. Have you ever put confidence in your own ability and fell flat on your face? I mean, you thought, oh, yeah, I got this. I got this, Lord. No need to worry about that. I got, I, I got this, Lord. You know, I've been around the block. And then all of a sudden you fall on your face. And what it is is we have a tendency of, uh, of, of putting ourselves in the driver's seat. We have a tendency of, of putting trust in our own ability. The Bible says put no trust in the arm of the flesh. Because, you know, your arm will get tired after a while. God's arms don't get tired. And so, and so we need to put faith and confidence in, in God. Um, and so it says here in James, uh, James 1, and, and let's look at verse 2 here. It says here, my brethren, count it uh, all grief when you... Oh, I'm reading a reverse translation this morning. Forgive me. Let me get the right Bible. Um, but, of course, this is sort of our, you know, what we tend to deal with. Or, or our attitude when we're dealing with a problem, right? 
It's my party, and I cry if I want to. Cry if I want to. You'd cry, too, if it was happening to you, right? So, so remember that old song? Yeah. It's my party, and I cry if I want to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, everybody, you know, and, and there is a time, you know, the Bible says there is a time to weep. Yes. There is a time to cry, you know, yes. you know, you know, you know, um, you know, crying endures in the evening, but, but joy comes in the morning. You know, the Bible says that, you know, weep with those that weep and rejoice with those. Who, you know, I'm not, I'm not doubting, you know, we do go through issues. We go through problems and, and we know that they're, you know, they can even be serious issues in our eyes. And we, I understand that. I'm not belittling, belittling that. But, yes, there might be a time to cry, but there is a time to shake it off, too. Amen. There's a time to, you know, sometimes we just got to move out of our, our misery, yes. you know, and, and start rejoicing. Yes, you know, um, King David, he lost uh, a son with Bathsheba. I don't know if you remember this story, but, but King David, uh, you know, he had a son uh, with Bathsheba, which the relationship at that time wasn't right. There was a lot of issues there. And there was judgment that was pronounced on, 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 on David and, and what happened there. You know, he committed adultery and he ended up getting this woman pregnant. And, um, you know, it sounds like days of our lives. No, okay. But uh, you read the Bible, it's more interesting than a soap opera. So, I mean, you start reading the Bible, it's the most interesting book on planet Earth. Uh, I don't know why you wouldn't want to read the, the stories in the Bible are so, so awesome and so real. It's better than any soap opera you ever watch. And so, but David... There was judgment placed on his household because of the sin that he committed. And, um, you know, the Bible said that, that there was judgment and, and, and his son actually uh, got sick and, and uh, he was in the process of being sick. David was, was fasting and praying and believing that God will turn the situation around. Even though that God already pronounced judgment, we, he already knew that, that his son would not make it. Um, he, w- he was just praying and fasting, believing that God would change his mind. You know, you know, God can pronounce judgment, but God can change his mind on judgment. Amen. He sure can. What? Yeah, yeah. Is that true, Pastor? Yeah. yeah, very much. He can change his mind. He can actually give you more grace. You can really mess up and, and, and really did some bad things and really deserving of being judged uh, on that matter. And judgment could be hitting you. But, but you know what? We still need to lift up our eyes and, and repent, renounce those things, and ask God for his mercy. Yes. This, is the, this is the thing that really baffles me when I read the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, you'll find that in the end days and the tribulation and, um, you know, when the Antichrist is here, we're not going to be here at that time anyway. We're going to be having a supper with Jesus up in heaven. I'm going on the first load. Um, if you want to go through the tribulation, by all means, but uh, I believe God's raised, I'm going to be raised up on the first load, amen? Yeah. And, um, and so I'm going to escape, you know, all the trial and tribulation. And so there's a lot of scripture based on that, and you can have your theology, and I'm going to have mine, amen? And, um, and so, but anyway, um, uh, there's going to be people that are going to be encountering all sorts of, of um, turmoil in their life. You know, they're, they're going to have... have um, you know, they're going to be crying out to God. They're going to have disease. And, oh, I'm sorry. They're going to be crying out to God. Or they're not going to be crying out to God. They're going to have these disease and all that. And the Bible says that all this pressure is going to be on mankind. But one thing they won't do is cry out to God. They won't repent. They won't cry out to God. All they're going to do is gnash their teeth and curse God. There's going to be people like that. Let it be not said of us. Amen. Let it not be said that we're going to be cursing God. When all the tri- you know, see, there's, it's a two-edged sword. When, when, when the enemy comes in like a flood, when the enemy comes in and he starts doing things and, and starts raining on our parade, there's going to be two things that we're going to do as Christians. We're either going to, you know, we're going to, well, it might be more than two things, but this is what I'm thinking about. We're either going to, we're going to um, get mad at God. We get mad at God. God, why is this coming on us? Why? I've been doing all the right things. And then we're going to, and then we, it may even cause us to w- walk away from it and get offended with God. We can get offended with God. We get offended, then we're going to say, well, you know, I was better off before I served God. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to get you offended and get you moving away from the things of God. Amen. 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 And so that, that, it's a two-edged, or, or the other side, you're going you're gonna to put more trust and faith in God, in the trial. In other words, you're going to realize that, that 
you're, you don't have the ability to come out of that trial. You don't have the ability to bring yourself through it like other times. And, you, and you're going to just say, God, I'm just going to throw myself on your mercy. I need your help in this situation. I need you to help me. And, and you're going to get even closer to God. There's only two things that are going to really, really happen. You're either going to be driven further from God because we get, we're going to be driven further from God because we get upset with God. We don't know why this happened. We're, we're actually putting, uh, we're looking at God in human terms. You ever looked at God as being in, in humanistic terms as in, you know, uh, you think you see every, you think, see, we, we think we see every angle of the situation. We're only seeing it from one point. God sees every angle. And so we tend to judge God by the angle we see it. Oh, God, that brother served you, and they died of cancer, and they're the, they were the most faithful person in the church, and so we judge God's righteousness by what we see. And we think, God's not right. You know, this brother was right. Do you know the brother's heart? That's right. Do you know what he was, you know, do you know if he was really believing or if he was just in hope? Do you, uh, why are we putting that brother or even you, what you're going through, your, your faithfulness and your righteousness up against God's righteousness. Amen. And we have a tendency to say, God, that's not right. You know, the world's saying that all the time. Well, if God was really, you know, loving God, then why is all these wars and why is all this? If God was all just, why are unjust things happening to good people? I can tell you there's a devil in this world. Amen. I can t- uh, in, in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, it says that the devil is the God of this world system and uh and jesus and, and god sent jesus for the solution jesus is the, the 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 reason he's the hope he's the solution for the problems of mankind and so we have to we have to think about these things and 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 the enemy will always try to pull us back into an attitude of ingratitude an attitude of god why 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 is this happening i'm doing all the right things well, you know, that's when we need to pull back and get some wisdom. Let's look at this. It says here uh, that this is interesting because James was a half-brother uh, of Jesus, and he has a church, and he's, he's writing to us Christians in this letter. And he says, count it all joy when you fall into trials and, and, and knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. So he says this is the number one thing we need to do. It's when we fall into trials, tribulations, temptations, we need to count it all joy. In other words, we don't thank God for the thing that's happened to you. Thank God that he can bring you through it. Amen. We don't praise God for the car accident, but we thank God that we walked away from the car accident. Right. Right. We don't thank God that, that all this evil is happening. Oh, thank God that, that, that I just got mugged. No, we thank God that, that you didn't get killed. Right. You know, we, we have to find... The, the re- reason to thank God. Thank God, even if you did get killed, you're in heaven. And a lot of times I think God is constantly warning us, we're just not hearing. See, the Holy Spirit leads and guides us into all truth, and, lo- and sometimes we get dull of hearing. We don't hear when the warning signs. We don't hear God. God's always warning us, but we're just not listening. And if we just learn to get quiet and listen, God will direct us in the smallest affairs of life, and he will bring us into victory in every area of our life. Amen. So as we see here, it says here that we need to count it all joy. See, there's going to be two reasons why the problem and the pressure is coming our way. One, it's because the word is being tested in our hearts. The word, because the Bible says the devil will come immediately to steal the word that's being sown in you. You stand on the word that tithing and giving offerings is, is right, and then your, your refrigerator breaks down. Well, there's a test. Are you going to believe God? Because God can turn that around easy, but are you going to believe God and continue to still give? Or are you going to believe what the, what the devil just attacked something? In, 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 you know, there's a process. We still have to, we have to believe God and trust God and obey God even though the wrong things are happening. So the enemy is going to attack the, the word of God. He's going to try to make you believe that God's word is not really true. Okay? We don't want to side on that. So, 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 so when the attack comes, it's either going to be attack on the word that we're standing on or um, it's an attack because we've opened the door. Okay. What? The Bible says a curse cannot come causeless in Proverbs. So we can open the door. So we have to evaluate, did I open the door? Is it because I did something wrong? 
um, you know, they, they're, they're, you know they, 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 they come to your house at 3 o'clock in the morning, and, and now they're, they're uh, the, the, the police officers, and they, they, they're hustling you to, to jail. And then you say, well, why? Because you robbed that bank last week. Oh, that's right. <laughs> wow, the devil's really after you. No, you, you did something. <laughs> and, you know, you know you, you, you're praying, you're up here, and you're praying for healing. And the Lord, and, and, and next it says here that you have to seek wisdom. You know, it's good to seek wisdom. Amen. Start worshiping God. Get in the right frame of mind that God's not doing it to you. And then we start worshiping God. Now we need to ask God for his wisdom. We need to ask God to reveal to us wisdom in, in the situation. A lot of times he's talking to us, but we don't want to listen. You know, we have high blood pressure, and we have all these issues, but we like our pancakes too. Do you know what I'm saying? We, sometimes we don't want, the Lord may be, be moving on us. Get a checkup, you know. Uh, you know get a, it's, it's okay to get a checkup. At least you know what you're standing in faith for. You know, the enemy will try to rack your brain. You got this, you got this, you got this. You may not have any of that. Amen. Go get a checkup. That might be for somebody today. If you're dealing with some issues, get some wisdom on the matter. Find out what, what you're up against. Amen. Most of what you're up against is a lie from the enemy anyway. Amen. So, so whatever you're dealing with, it's probably a lie. 90% of it is a lie. So, so, so find out what it is, then you can apply your faith to it. You know, face it. You know, people, you know, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people are in problems and issues because they just don't want to face their problems. They just, they want to bury it and act like it's not there. Have you ever done that? You don't want to look at the problem, so you don't look at it. I'm not looking at it, so it doesn't exist. I don't look at it, it doesn't exist. It floats right back up. <laughs> faith is not saying that the problem doesn't exist. That's like mind science. It's not there, it's not there, it's not there. No, faith is calling those things that be not as though they were. Faith is saying, I know this problem exists, the mountain's there, but I believe God's word, and I'm going to level that mountain with God's word. Amen. See, and when we start take, getting God's word, standing on God's word, thanking God for his word, we'll start to level that mountain. Amen? Amen? And so we have to get wisdom, and we need, a, we, need a, we need to add praise to our prayers. I said that last week. You know, it says, you know, uh, uh, there's a scripture that says, that, you know, we, we petition God, and then it also says that we give God thanksgiving. Yes. And um, after we petition God, petition is a request. So when you ask God something, then you say, Lord, you know, I need a job. You know, it's not, uh, you know, uh, and I thank you, Lord, that you're opening the door for this job. I ask you for your wisdom, what I need to do, because God will always give you direction. Amen. You know, sometimes we're missing it because we're not moving out in, in the direction that God's giving us. So, so he, want, he wants to give us direction, he wants to give us wisdom, but we want to thank God. See, the most important thing that we, we need to get from God, yes, is direction, but next thing is favor. And we, we get favor by agreeing with God's word, thanking God that, that he's watching over his word to perform it. So as we, as, we, as we go through issues and problems, we need, to get the, we need to start thanking God that he's bringing us out of that problem. You know, you know that, that, that praise and worship, praising God can bring you out of, of the problem you're dealing with, can, can actually, whatever the devil has stole from you, can, can bring it back. Amen. Whatever missing in your life, whatever's broken in your life, it can be made back whole again. Amen. Sometimes I lose my keys, and I'm, and I'm, and anybody ever just kind of misplaced your keys, and you're, you're running late, and you're just, where did I put my keys at? And, and sometimes you know, you're running frantic, oh, whoa, 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 got to get out of here, got to get that appointment. Anybody like that? And, uh, Oh, and uh, and so and so what we and then we tend God I need those keys I need those keys but I I find that I, that when I start thanking God thank you Lord I call those keys and I thank you that I have those keys now thank you that you're revealing to me where those keys are at thank you that I'm and that you're directing me I calm down I start thanking God and all of a sudden He just directs me where the keys at Amen uh, so you can start worshiping God and you can worship your way out of your problem Amen. you can thank God out of your ish issues. Yeah. You can start worshiping. And so we, we want to be people that worship God. We want to be people. This is a, actually a worship service where we come actually to worship God. It's more than just receiving information. It's more than just getting motivated. It's us, you know, connecting with God. Amen. See, we got to connect with God. You know, the Bible says this, that God inhabits the praises of his people. Yes. See, if you want to be a habitation of God, 
And see, in, in, in God, it's all joy, goodness, love. Um, you know, it's all good things in God. Amen. If you want to be a habitation of God, we, we, we need to um, uh, worship him. He inhabits the, the praises of his people. The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praises. We need, to be, we need to be people and learn to be people of pra- to praise God. You know, a great way to praise God, even when you come in here, you know, and I do, I observe people, you know, Jesus is watching people when you praise. And some of us, we, I don't think we, we got this praise thing down yet. I, I think, you know, when you come in, first of all, it would be good that you come in for the full praise and worship. You know, instead of coming in, maybe, it's, it, you know, I understand we're all fighting schedules, but instead of coming in 10 minutes late, 15 minutes late, Come in where you get, you know, you could get your answer in the wor- in the praise and worship yeah. right here yeah. before, the, p- before I even minister. Yeah. You know, you know, if we got here early, got here at 10 o'clock ready, ex- expecting yeah. God can move, I think, more in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, and so what we need to do is we need to start praising God and get here early, get here, you know, ready, get here expectant because expectancy is the, is the, um, is, it's the, it's the key to miracles. So, so when we come in expecting and coming in worship and worshiping God, and this is what I want to say to you, that it's okay. I know you may not, you may, you know, all, you know, a lot of us coming from a lot of different backgrounds, but the Bible talks about lifting up holy hands without wrath and dissension. Yeah, yeah. And see, when you lift up holy hands, I know it's not, I know it's not comfortable to some of us, but see, see this right here, let me just illustrate, and I got to close here, but Right here, when you lift up other hands, it, it does seem kind of weird, you know. Well, they, but you know what? You know, in the clubs, or or even when in in in, in, a, in even in at the football games, you know, I talked about last week. They're not normally doing this, you know. And, you know, this is really an act of praise. When you're raising up and you're looking up to the sky, you're saying, "God, it's all you. Amen. I need you." You know, that's what you know. Even as babies, you know, I, I have two two children. And, you know, when they want me, they just look up and they just raise their hands, you know. Amen. And I said, man, I'm ready to come rescue them, you know. <laughs> what do you want? Well, anything you want. And there, it's a dependency on God. Amen. See, what the enemy was trying to do is cut off. He doesn't want, want us to have a dependency on God. The more mature you are in God, the more dependent you are on him. Amen. The less mature, the more dependent you are on your own ability to do things. So, so as, we, as we lift our hands... I like what one minister said. You're actually plugging into heaven. Just think of your hands as being like a like a like um, prongs, like a plug, and you're plugging into heaven. Yeah. You know, and it's the, and the Bible says it's the it's the grace of God or the anointing. I don't know if you ever heard that word anointing, but it's it's the presence of God that will destroy the yoke of bondage in our life. Yeah. We, if we have more presence of God in our life, more yokes are going to be broken in our life. That yoke is something that that, that holds us down. And so as we just, as we, even when we don't feel like it, yes. that's the highest form of praise and worship. When you're worshiping God and raising up your hands, when you don't feel like it, yes. when, when, when everything says don't do that, when everything says just, yes. just shake your fists at God, you know, there's a lot of people doing that. Yes. I don't want to be like that. I want to be like this. Yes. So as we, as, we, as we get in unity and start worshiping God, and pray, just do it. Try it next Sunday. Yes. Watch God start moving in your life. Why? Because he's worthy of our praise. I mean, he's worthy. Jesus is worthy of our praise. King of kings and Lord of lords. He paid the price for us to have victory. He went to a godless cross. He received two beatings. The beating with whips and, and, and the beating uh, on the cross. Are you hear what I'm saying to you? He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of us to worship him. He's worthy. We need to start practicing for heaven because that's what we're going to be doing in heaven. And we need to start doing this. And I'm going to say the second thing is that when we're feeling beat down, we sometimes we come in here in church, we feel beat down and we just need a word. This is another attitude of victory. When you raise your hand, you're saying, I'm victorious in Christ. I'm not going to let the enemy keep my arms down. I'm saying that I have the victory no matter what it looks like. No matter if it looks like I'm losing, I have the victory because the greater one abides in me. See, you see, this saying I have the victory, this saying I'm surrendering all. I surrender all. And as we start doing these things, as we honor God, God will honor us. Some of us aren't seeing our prayers answered because we're, because we're lightly esteeming the things of God. If you lightly esteem the things of God, God will lightly esteem you and your prayers. 
What? Yeah. Pastor, that's strong this morning. But it's the truth. Amen. You know, if we lightly esteem him, but we don't want to lightly esteem God. We want to give God all the worship, all the praise. There's too many people doing this. There's too many people murmuring and griping about God, about the church, about people. But we need to start thanking. We need to start worshiping. We need to start giving him all the glory and all the praise. And watch the power of God come in. Watch those things break off you. Watch a healing starts happening in your life. See some miracles in your life. You're only one praise away from your miracle, from your breakthrough. And start plugging in. And you're going to see God move on your behalf. Why don't we do that? Can, 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 can you all raise your hands just, just for a second? I just want to see the whole church do it. Can you do that? Can, you just, can everybody do that for me? Please, just, just do it. Just, and just say, thank you, Lord Jesus. You are great. You're merciful. You're working on my behalf. You're bringing me in to new things. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm honoring you this morning. I'm worshiping you this morning. Thank you. My dependency is on you. It's on you. I need you in every area of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're bringing me through to the promised land. You're keeping me in the promised land. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, I just thank you for your mercy this morning. I thank you, Lord, that it's you, Lord. You're the one that can bring us through to the other side. I thank you for these precious people out here. Oh, that I know they have a heart to get close to you or they wouldn't be here this morning. And perhaps you're here. Maybe you're a first-time visitor. Maybe you're out here and, and you don't know if you died today, you'd make it to heaven. Jesus paid the price to set you free, really, from yourself and from, from, from the, the tyranny of the enemy that's trying to keep you bound in some areas. If that's you today, you don't know if, you're, if you died today that you make it to heaven. You don't have a no-so, uh, and you like to have a no-so. I would like to pray with you. I'm not going to call you up for sake of time, but I will pray for you where you're at. Just raise your hand. Glory to God. I would like to pray for you. Praise God. I see, I see that hand. Glory to God. I see that hand. Praise God. Amen. I see those hands. Well, praise God. I want you to, I want you to pray this prayer after me. It's just a simple prayer, but if you mean it with your heart, uh, I believe that God's going to usher you into the greatest love that you will ever experience. And so just, just pray this after me. Congregation, if you can do this with me, that would be great, even though we know that you're already saved and you have a relationship. Just say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for my sins. He paid the price for me to have victory. Jesus, I believe you were raised from the dead for me. Jesus, I believe that, that you're sitting at the right hand of the Father. And Jesus, I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. Take control of my life. I'm giving it to you. I renounce all hidden things of darkness. Anything that would displease you, Lord. And I'm moving towards you from this day forward. Heavenly Father, fill me with a fullness of yourself. In Jesus' name. Amen.